Hi everyone and welcome to another A320neo video in the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. This time we're going to show you how to go from the cold and dark cockpit to ready, being ready for uh, pushback and taxi. Now I must say that this is the new mod which has been made by Fly-by-Wire Simulations. They've updated the A320neo, the default version for Flight Simulator, and made the startup much, much more realistic, as well as fixing a few of the other bugs along the way. Their aim is to uh, to try and take the default aircraft and make it payware level or study grade level and so far they are doing a fantastic job so it's definitely worth checking them out if uh, you want to check them out fly by wire simulation so I'll pop a link in the uh, in the comments section so uh, do go and download that as well they're in uh, stable edition as well at the moment at the time I'm doing this video and everything appears to be working absolutely fine so here we are on the ground at Nice in France we've got live weather on at the minute which looks great although there's some dark clouds coming so we'll uh, crack on and try and be ready to get out of here before it starts to rain uh, so cold and dark cockpit I'm going to use a real world checklist which I've got uh, here in uh, in front of me so everything at the moment this is how the uh, the pilots would find the airplane uh, for the first flight of the day cold dark absolutely nothing is turned on all the engine masters are selected off the engine mode selector is off weather radar is off the reason you want the weather radar off is because it obviously transmits de uh, transmits radio waves from the front of the aircraft and you don't want to put the ground handlers in uh, in any danger of that so the weather radars off landing gear is down uh, let's see what else we've got so wiper we need to make sure that the windscreen wipers are turned off before activating the aircraft the simple reason for this is because if the windscreen wipers on the a320 were to start moving before it was raining you could actually scratch the windshield uh, which is a very expensive uh, thing to replace as I'm sure you can imagine so windscreen wipers are off and we've got the battery power which we're going to turn on now there we go so the battery power is now on we've got a few more lights up here for the fuel pumps followed by the external power which we will click on there we are and you can hear the various noises and fans kicking in there in the background once that's done we turn on the navigation lights this lets people outside the aircraft know that uh, there are people on board working on the aircraft so we've got the navigation lights turned on there so cockpit lights if required so we can turn those up or down that's entirely up to you and then we want to turn on the screens now at the moment you can see all the screens are blank and they're not actually blank they're just turned down at the minute so Turn these on. These two here. And a lovely touch, I think, is making the first officer's panel separate to the uh, the main pilot panel there. So they do their self-check and you'll see then that we've got these red archers at the moment nothing is available and that is because we have not turned on the GPS system or IDEA's system which is found up here now if we pop this here you can see that these will start to align and this actually takes a while to work as in real life and we have an announcement here on the ECAM so the IR alignment will take nine minutes it's important that the aircraft isn't actually moving whilst that takes place because that is getting its positions from the various satellites to work out where the uh, where the aircraft is so now they've been done we just need to check a couple of other things uh, we want to check that the flaps are in the up position the throttle oh should not be there the throttle should be down at idle and that is about as much as we can do for now. I haven't turned on the, uh, the 
flight director there we go turn that on and of course I prefer to work as we're in Europe in hectopascals so now everything's firing up as uh, as it should be turn the fuel pumps on and then all that's left as I say we're waiting for the alignment there which will take seven minutes seven minutes for that to work whilst that's taking place you can be programming in your flight plan if you want to know how to do that check out my other video on uh, a full flight tutorial that will tell you how to uh, work the flight plan if you want to uh, want to learn how to create a flight plan using Simbrief again uh, there's a video for that which will show you what to do uh, I've already pre-filed a flight plan in here on the uh, on the flight planning menu so I've already got a route there which I can check is all here but of course we can't check everything on the navigation display yet for another seven minutes once that's taken place you'll see the screen change to the normal map that you're used to <coughs> and you can use this time if you're flying on VATSIM or something like that to be requesting your clearance and uh, checking the charts uh, yeah once that's all done and you've got your clearance and you're ready for pushback you would turn on your APU master switch but not before turning the beacon lights on to let uh, people on the ground know that there are engines about to be started so turn on the APU master and we see here the APU screen comes and we'll see that this will start to uh, start to grow shortly if you're not running the modded version by fly-by-wire simulations then the APU master will uh, will be ready to use in a much faster time this now is much more realistic as you can see it's taken a while for it to start generating still five minutes to go before the GPS is aligned so again you can be checking the weather getting your clearance setting the correct uh, Q&H in the real world there is plenty to be doing so as I say normally at this point I would be uh, filling in the details in the flight plan because uh, what I've not done on here just yet is filled in all these details from my flight plan again the uh, the other video I've done has covered popping all those details in so we shouldn't be far off now the APU generator being ready I don't know if you can hear that firing up, I can hear it through the headphones. As the APU starts to generate power for the aircraft, the screens go back to self-testing mode, which again is a nice touch by fly-by-wire. The QNH is clearly not correct for the weather today at the moment as it says we are 260 feet below sea level. So now that's ready to start we can turn the APU bleed on which lets us prepare to start the engines.
whilst I was away there, I was just checking the QNH for the airport, which is actually 1023. So I'm going to change that. There we go. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Once both engines are uh, are running and stabilised, you're looking for an N1 rate of about 19.7, 19.8. And there's the barking dog as the hydraulics kick in. Don't know if you can hear that actually. Another little feature of the new fly-by-wire mod is we now have a working chronometer. So which is very useful when you're using your flight plan because the default one in the McDo doesn't work. It doesn't give you the actual times if you look on the flight plan. And they, uh, they don't really make much sense those times at the moment. There we go, so the GPS is aligned and our flight plan is all there and uh, waiting for us to go. Both engines have now stabilised, so once that's, uh, once that's checked, make sure we turn the engine mode to normal and turn off the APU. And then, once you've got your clearance, either through the ATC here on uh, Flight Simulator or VATSIM, however you fly, you are uh, you good to go. So that's how we get the A320 Neo ready from cold and dark to uh, ready for taxi. Hope you enjoyed that. Check out some of the other videos and obviously subscribe if you're finding these useful. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments or if you'd like to see a tutorial on anything else, please let me know and I'll try and get one online for you as soon as we can. That's all for now. Bye bye.